Hi, my name is Michelle Moore and I'm a teacher at Reagan High School. If you're watching this, you probably were interested because of the live Zoom that I said I was going to record and I accidentally unclicked the record button. So none of it eventually were actually recorded. So I'm going to squish everything I talked about in 30 minutes to a tiny little 15 minute video that I've already wasted 20 seconds of. So let's get going. Um, how do you get to Google Classroom? Well, first of all, you, there's a couple ways. You can do like your students do and just type in Google Classroom up in the search bar up here. Um, that's one way to get there. I personally prefer doing it old school and I type in the web address. The web address is classroom.google.com. So that's your option that's right here. So when I click on classroom.google.com, it's gonna take me to my Google Classroom homepage. Now you'll notice I have a lot of different tiles here. These tiles are all of my classes. Now again, I'm a teacher, so everything that you see from here down are classes that I actually teach. These three classes are classes that, well, I'm not clicking that one, let me delete that one. Okay. Um, so these two classes are classes that I'm currently a student in. So I'm gonna do some demonstrations with you guys um, on uh, this PBMF, which is Principles of Business Marketing and Finance with Ms. Wilkes. I'm gonna to pretend to be a student in that class so that you can kind of get that student perspective. So if I wanna know what's going on in Ms. Wilkes' class, I'm gonna click on the class right here. So this first page that you get to is the stream. The stream is basically like your news feed on Facebook. So it's your main page on Facebook where you see all of your friends' status updates. This is only going to be, for the most part, Ms. Wilkes' status updates. Now, there is an option in Google Classroom the teacher can choose to select where other students can collaborate in this kind of stream area. Personally, I don't like to clutter it because it can be, as you can see, pretty intimidating with a lot of different assignments. Now, this is a class that Ms. Wilkes has been teaching all year. So, it's of course, she has a lot of assignments in here. Um, but in this stream, you're going to see all of the assignments she posts, you're going to see all of the announcements she makes, and I really think that as we move forward and are potentially moving into a distance learning scenario, this is where you are going to see your teachers do a large amount of their communication. Because as a teacher, I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, one of my teacher views. So I'm going I'm to pull up a classroom just to show you the teacher view uh, that I'm currently teaching. So if I click right here and I click share something with your class and I type in, hello, today we are going to be working on, and I'm not going to do this because my students will all get an email, but if I click post, like I just said, all of my students will receive an email letting them know, oh, Miss Moore just posted uh, in our Google Classroom. So they will be alerted through email every single time your teacher posts an announcement, an assignment, a quiz, anything. Um, so they'll get that double notification if they have um, the Google Classroom app on their phone. They'll also get a notification letting them know that as well. Okay, so I'm going to come back. I'm now a student again, a student. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, Ms. Wilkes has posted a lot because I just joined her class and she's been teaching it since August. So if I hop over here to classwork, it's going to take essentially all of the announcements, which would have been like, hey guys, how's it going? What are you doing today? Things like that. It's gonna take that out of it and it's only gonna leave my assignments. So in classwork, you will only see assignments and materials. So materials would be anything that, um, so for instance, like right, let's see, right here. So her chapter six slide deck. So if I go into her chapter six slide deck, these are materials. Materials are essentially like your resources, like your books, your PowerPoints. So I can post my materials here so that I know what I'm learning, um, but I can also post my assignments here. So as the teacher, so as a student, that's where I'm gonna go to get my assignments. So for instance, let's just look, uh, we're gonna do this assignment right here. So let's just say that Ms. Wilkes just posted this parts of a product assignment. So if I click open, now I, wanna, I want you to keep in mind a couple of things. One, this was assigned back on February 7th, so obviously it's missing because I just joined this class. Two, Miss Wilkes is an in-class teacher at this point. She is giving directions to her students in class. So the fact that you're not seeing a lot of detailed instructions here is because she was giving the instructions in class. So moving forward in a distance learning environment, what I think you're probably gonna see more of is much more detailed instructions with your assignment, especially when we click. 
view assignment right here. So you're going to see detailed instructions right here. So just to give you an example of what that might look like, uh, pop over down here, very detailed instructions. So you can see I have very detailed instructions right here. Um, I tell the students exactly what they need to do, what you know order they need to do things in so that they can um, complete the assignment successfully. And I really think in this distance learning environment, this is what you're going to see a lot more of. Okay, so where is my assignment? This is all blank. blank. That's not my assignment. If I look over here where it says your work, this is where your teacher can post what they want you to work on. So if I have already created a template like Ms. Wilkes has for me, if I've created a template, then this is where I can post it and my students can access it so that they're not having to start from scratch. So if I click on this, it's gonna take me to a Google drawing file. She had her uh, students do a Google drawing and she wanted um, me to pick a product and then paste a picture of that product to the left of the colored text boxes and then describe the six parts of a product that has been chosen. So I would, I can insert a picture Image, search the web, I'll choose iPhone, and click and insert. I'm not going to do this whole assignment, don't worry. And I scale it and put it right here. And then she wants me to write in these little text boxes about basic product is an iPhone 11. Okay, so let's just say I'm done. Okay, I've finished my assignment. I'm ready to turn my assignment into Ms. Wilkes. Well, through the wonderfulness that is Google, I do not have to click File, Save, which you'll notice there is no file save. It doesn't exist. That's because everything in Google automatically saves. There's only one thing in Google that does not automatically save, and that is a Google Form. If you are not finished with a Google Form, and your computer shuts down, you will lose everything that you did on that Google form. So it's very important that if you're ever working in a quiz, quote unquote, or in a form, like a worksheet, and your, your teacher has assigned you a something that is in a form, make sure that you don't shut down or lose connection while you're working on that form because you could very well lose all of your information. But we are safe in a Google drawing, so I'm gonna exit out of here. And just in case you don't believe me, I'm gonna open this back up so you can see that everything has been saved. Ta-da! Everything's still saved. And remember, I said I'm done. So now all I need to do so that Miss Wilkes knows that I'm a great student who has done my work, I come over here and I click Turn In. And if I have, uh, hold on, if I have any comments that I need to let her know, like uh, I was working on this until 2 a.m., I hope you love it. Uh, it's not true but I can go ahead and send that and only she will see that. None of the rest of the class will see it. This will just be a private comment between her and I. Um, so then I click turn in and turn in and my assignment is done. Okay, so let's look at another assignment. So I'm gonna show you an example where she has not provided me with um, a template for me to work on and I have to upload something from scratch. So we're going to do this view assignment. Now you'll notice we do have something here, right? She has uploaded a video showing me how to download my Canva project when it's done. Canva is a third party uh, design software that helps you, or not software, but a web, webware, can't remember the right word. Um, where you can just create graphic design. It's very robust and absolutely wonderful. Um, odds are high that your student will end up working on Canva sometime in the next few years. Um, so she's uploaded video here so that I know what I'm doing. Um, she has uploaded a rubric here for me, but let's just say in this instance, I needed to also upload a Google slide presentation. So what I can do is I can click add or create and I can create a slide presentation. Now, again, because Google's amazing, it knows that I wanted to create this, guy, this slide presentation for this exact project. So it went ahead and labeled that slide presentation for this exact project. And I'm gonna go home. Great. 
So from there, again, everything automatically saves. So I can exit out. Let's just say I'm done with what I need to do and I'm done with this project. I can now click, of course, turn in. Now, something you're gonna see, um, hopefully, from teachers, this is a new feature. So a lot of teachers haven't really caught on to this feature yet. Um, sometimes when Classroom rolls things out, it only rolls it out in waves. And teachers, like the, ma the vast majority of teachers, only really got this feature midway through this year. So this new feature is a rubric feature. So you'll notice that down through here, you can see that there's a rubric. And you know, for this assignment, uh, she was doing her pitch slide deck and presentation. So she had her rubric right here. Now this rubric is kind of like, doesn't mean anything to us at this point. What I need to do is I need to click this down arrow and I can see exactly how she's trying to grade me for each and every thing that she's trying to grade. Now you'll notice I have these boxes here. These boxes, when I click on them, do nothing. But when Ms. Wilkes clicks on them, it assigns me a grade. So when she's going through and she's grading my assignment, she can just go click, click, click and then the grade automatically populates because Google is amazing and we love it so much. So that's how the rubric works. It's not really interactive. It's more here for you to reference. So it's important that if you are looking at your students' uh, assignments with them and you see that rubric that you say, hold on, hold on, first thing, let's look at the rubric to see how you're going to be graded. So the last things I'm gonna go over with you is just a way for you to get an overall comprehensive view of what your student has to do and when. So there's a few ways for you to see what your student needs to do. You can go to their stream and you can see upcoming work right here. It'll show you what is due very coming soon. And you can see we don't have any work that's due soon. However, I'm new to this class and every single thing is missing. So just because I have no upcoming work doesn't mean that I don't have any work to do. So if I go to classwork, I can go and I can click in every individual assignment and see if I have a missing assignment or not. But you don't have that kind of time. So what I recommend you do is you come over to what we like to call the hamburger. You come over here and you click on your to-do list. The reason I scrolled is because these are all the classes I teach. Yours will be on top as a student. So you click on the to-do list and that to-do list is going to show you every single assignment that your student needs to do and when it's due and if it's late. I have news for you, it won't be in red if it's late. <laughs> So you'll see that all of these are missing because they were due back in August. Now, this is a great place to have your student kind of make their home base because if I'm, if you say, okay, look, you didn't do your my needs and wants assignment, all they have to do is click here and it takes them straight to it. So it's a really good place for them to see everything they need to do. Now, the other good place where they can see everything they need to do is when you go into your class, if you go to classwork, you can go to Google Calendar right here. And your student, because they have a Google Classroom account, also has a Google Calendar. So if I click on Google Calendar, on the left over here, you have the option to manage all of your calendars. You'll see right here is my PBMF first. So if I click that, it's in black, and you'll see right here, I have an assignment. And if I click here, guess what happens? It takes me directly to that assignment again. So there's so many ways that you can really manage what your student is doing. The last thing that I wanna show you is something that is very important, and I only have a minute and a half to tell you about it. Um, so on this people tab right here, something that you are not going to be able to see, but your teacher is going to be able to see, is this thing that says invite guardians. If you are the listed guardian for your student's account, which your teacher has to input, you will get a either your choice daily or weekly summary of all of your students' assignments. All you have to do is ask the teacher who's in charge of your Google Classroom account to make you the guardian under the people tab in Google Classroom. Once you have done that, you will start getting those guardian summaries. And that's it. That's the long and short of it. There's a lot more things that I could talk about, but I'm limited to a 15 minute video and I'm at 40, 14 minutes and 40 seconds. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Good luck through this distance learning process. Please offer your teachers grace. They're learning. We're all trying to get through this together. You guys are experiencing this journey with us through Google Classroom.